Hello and welcome back. This is the first video of our Apache Airflow tutorial for beginner series where we will cover all about Apache Airflow from beginner stage to the more advanced stuff. So this will include total of five lectures. So let's discuss about what we are going to cover in this course. Okay, so in the first course, we are going to cover the introductory part of Apache Airflow where we will see like what is Apache Airflow, its history as well as the evolution and we'll also see some of the use cases of Apache Airflow in the real world as well as we will see like the benefits and the advantages as well as we will set up and install Apache Airflow in our system. Also in the second lecture, we are going to see all about its concept and the components. So in this, we are going to see what is direct acyclic graph in Airflow as well as we will see like operators as well as different tasks and the sensors and hooks and we will also see some of the dependencies of Apache Airflow. Also in the third lecture it's all about building workflows with the Apache Airflow where we will get our hands dirty and build our Apache Airflow workflows. So here we will see all about how to create and structure a DAG which is direct acyclic graph and also define the task and their dependencies. Also we will understand like the operators and the executors or also we will see like the scheduling and triggering our rules and error handling as well as the retries. And in the next lecture which is the fourth lecture we are going to see some advanced Apache Airflow concept. So here we will see like sub DAGs as well as trigger diagrams as well as XCOM and data sharing and scaling get ready for higher availability. And at the last, we will see all about monitoring, debugging and logging of the Apache Airflow where we will see like how to monitor the DAG runs as well as the task instances. And we will also see some performance optimization techniques as well as the alerting and notification system in Apache Airflow. So this is going to be very fun. So let's get started with our first lecture. We will see some introductory part of Apache Airflow including the setup and installation of Apache Airflow in our systems. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so we will start with the basic one, which is what is Apache Airflow? That will be the first question which come into your mind. So Apache Airflow is nothing but a open source workflow automation as well as the scheduling platform. So here it's designed to help you create schedule as well as monitor the complex workflows and making it a very vital tool in the world of data engineering and the data science. So you may ask what really is a workflow? So your workflow can contain many things. So it can include like extraction, transformation or loading, whatever it is. So you can think of Airflow as your personal conductor which orchestrate for various tasks in your data pipeline. So that is the main task of Apache Airflow. So this is all about the introductory part. Now let's take a deep dive into its history and the evolution. So Airflow was originally developed by Airbnb in 2014 as its internal tool for data orchestration as well as the managing their workflows in Airbnb. But they saw its potential and they open sources and that gave us the birth of Apache Airflow project. So since then Apache Airflow has witnessed the remarkable growth in the data engineering industry and everyone loves its orchestration capabilities as well as the scheduling capabilities which makes the data engineering a lot more easier and it is embraced by the organization of all sizes. So with its upcoming releases, Airflow added some of the best enhancements which gave us the user friendly interface as well as the higher scalability and the easier scheduling tasks and it also has the great community support. So it makes the Airflow one of the best tool for data orchestration in the data engineering field. Okay, so now let's talk about some of the key use cases of Apache Airflow. So Airflow finds its application in various domains. So it can also help us in the ETL which is nothing but extract, transform, load process in data engineering as well as it can also help us in data warehousing and the data analysis. So in ETL, Airflow can help us automate extracting the data from various source systems and it unifies it and it can also transform it to the required format and load it back to the data warehouse. So this will automate a lot of stuff and also saves us every data engineer's time. And also it maintains the accuracy of the data as well. So that is the biggest pro of Apache Airflow. 
and that is the reason it's a go to choice for organization which manages the complex data pipelines because it makes the life way more easier by automating most of the manual work like data loading extraction transformation all those tasks will be automated and with accuracy using the apache airflow so now let's talk about some of the benefits of apache airflow so it provides higher flexibility as well as the scalability and it has the rich set of operators as well as the sensors additionally its plugin ecosystem and the community support makes it a very robust choice for workflow automation tasks so flexibility means you can create the tailor made workflows which ties to your specific needs and its scalability ensures that it will support growing workloads because every industry is generating petabytes of data every day and the workloads will get complex day by day so that is the reason scalability matters the most in the big data world okay so this was all about the introductory part of apache airflow and how it is a robust workflow automation tool which orchestrates the data pipeline task very easily and why it is so popular because of its robust community support now let's set up our apache airflow in our windows system so without further any ado let's install apache airflow and let's kick it off okay so installation and setting of the apache airflow is not the most difficult installation in the world it is fairly simple you just need some prerequisites to be covered first you need the dockers for windows so we are going to download it right away and i hope you already have visual studio code because i am not going to cover vs code installation it's pretty simple and if you find any difficulties you can let me know in the comments but that will be fairly simple just go ahead and download vs code and set it up it's just a code editor now let's talk about the docker so in docker we need to get into one link for windows installation and it is required for setting up our apache airflow so that two prerequisites we need to cover before jumping on and start our apache airflow service so let's get started okay so as you can see i will give this link in the description below so that you don't have to go into any hassle right that's my task so as you can see here we have the install docker desktop on windows so we are going to download docker desktop and set it up right away so you have to click this friendly button which is docker desktop for windows click on it and let it get downloaded i have already downloaded it but let's do it one more time for you guys okay so as you can see it got completed it was 579 mb so not that much so just go ahead and click on the docker desktop installer so just click on it so here it is initializing our docker desktop now so just click on okay for adding the shortcut to the desktop because it makes sense so it will take like 2 to 3 minutes for unpacking the files and setting up your docker desktop and then we will kick off our instance and then go ahead and just do some configuration and we are good to go to kick off our apache airflow so just wait for it to complete so just grab a coffee and we'll continue after this and there you go the installation is succeeded so just close it and launch the docker desktop right away so as you can see you can accept the policies now and here we are not going to sign in right away so just continue without signing in and you can give it as it is continue so it is starting the docker engine right now so after that we are going to just need a one yaml file which i'll be giving that link in the description below and we are going to just set some dot env file and we are good to kick off our apache airflow service so it will take like three to four minutes depending upon your system performance so yeah that's it it got completed for me so right now our docker engine has already started so now let's jump on to the yaml file which we need for our installation okay so here is the docker dash compose dot yaml file so this file you need so just click on this link i'll be giving this in the description below as well so as you can see this is the yaml file so you have to just save it right away so just click on ctrl s here and i'll be saving this file so here you have to see that this has the text document as a save type 
and when you save it it will probably be the .txt file so it will be like .aml.txt file simple thing is you just have to remove that .txt after renaming that file that's very similar so in this in you just have to only keep the docker dash compose.aml so you have to remove all this stuff before that because filing name convention is very important here and you have to just keep this docker dash compose.yaml it will also have the dot txt but you can easily remove it so just save it in the drive safely as you can see the file has successfully downloaded so just go and navigate to that drive and as you can see this is your docker dash compose file present so now once you have this docker dash compose file you just have to copy it and save it somewhere else so just let's go into the C drive and in user as well as in the username, whatever it is, just create one folder here. So we'll create a folder and name it as materials, right? So just keep in materials here and here you have to paste this file here. Okay. So after that, you have to open the VS code. So I hope you already downloaded and installed the VS code. So I'll just open the VS code from here and you can just click cancel it and you have to open the folder so just open the folder and navigate to our materials folder so i'll just quickly go and navigate to that folder and it is materials so just select the folder here and as you can see our docker dash compose.yaml file is already present here so you can just see its content so it has all the setup process of apache airflow in our docker container so all you have to do is you have to make another file of .env where you will be having all the configurations. It is pretty simple file so you just have to right click and create a new file and the file name will be .env that's it. And in .env you have to put some text which I already given here. So just copy this and paste it in that .env file. Okay so once you successfully did that just control S. I'll be giving this into description as well. So don't worry. So once you save this, you have to just open the terminal and create on new terminal. That's it. And now in terminal, as you can see, we are in the right directory. So all you have to do is you have to just type like docker dash compose space up dash D. That's it. That is the only command you need to set up our airflow. So just hit enter and wait for it to complete. So it will be pulling like the airflow scheduler, the triggering facility. So as you can see, it is also pulling like the init, web server, worker pulling. It is doing all these things and set up the Postgres as well because it needs it. It's a prerequisite for running Apache Airflow. And once this all process is completed, then we are good to go and head off to the 8080 port of localhost where you can reach our Airflow. Okay, so as you can see, all our apache airflow services are up and running so all you have to do is you have to just go ahead and jump on to your favorite browser open the new tab and type like localhost 8080 so you will see this 8080 already saved this so there you go once you have this you will have to put your username and password so by default you have to create the default username and password so let's create a single user admin with a password admin. So I have this workaround present here. So here we are just creating a role of admin and the username is admin and also the password is admin. So since we are in the learning phase, it's not an issue. You can just copy this and I'll be giving this in the description below so that you don't go into any hassle. So in the VS code, let's paste it. Just paste it and there you go. It is already running and creating our admin user and that's it your user admin is created with the role of admin so you can just go ahead and just log in via the admin username and password so i'll give the admin here as well as the admin here that's it sign in and and there you have it you have successfully installed apache airflow in your system this was pretty simple and straightforward process and you don't have to worry about any environment variables or anything any compatibility issues and this is all possible because of the docker installation technique 
so this is very simple so as you can see there are diff different DAX present here so these are samples provided by airflow so you have don't have to worry about it in the upcoming lectures we are going to see all about its components its characteristic and its architecture and we will see some advanced topic like creating our workflow how to schedule it trigger it monitor it and all the stuff so this was all about today's lecture if you face any difficulties in the installation you can let me know in the comments and i'll get back to you as soon as possible